mid lane, we're going to have Dendi going to be playing your Sven. We have AB Rain, also known as, of course, FNG, who's going to be playing not just your captain, but your support Vengeful Spirit. Havost is going to be playing the core carry Necrophos. And Vanscore is going to be on your support Skywrath Mage. 30 seconds to battle. Now, we're getting a nice D-Ward out here. Uh, they're able to clean this one up for themselves and get a little bit of uh, control taken away from the Void. Yogi's going to have a harder time surviving, even though he did commit to a lot of HP regen with uh, eight Tangos and a Sav, actually. So, As far as uh, Empire's lineup here, they're going to be running Resolution on the mid with that Death Prophet. And, uh, of course, as I mentioned, Yogi will be taking the face of Void bottom. So that'll leave uh, the tri lane here. Solo on Dazzle. Always want to fly back on support. He's the Witch Doctor, the and of course begins. they're going to be supporting Silence Gyro Copter. So very interesting yes. to see what they can accomplish here, how early they can take the Tier 1 if Gyro goes for Bassy immediately before Boots. I think that there's a lot of potential to push this out, but of course Tide, Funic, the Anchor Smash should be able to hold the line for quite some time. All right, with that we're going to get the things underway. CS Chart popped up, ready to go, and a Bounty Rood early in the pocket of Dazzle. Any support loves to get hold of an early Bounty Rood because why not? A little bit of extra XP and gold doesn't hurt anyone. And in this tri-lane setup, but going against Funic here, he should be able to get zoned back relatively good, though these two supports could be pretty squishy if caught out by uh, the bad end of a couple of anchor smashes. So even though Fly is going to be able to do some serious work here on Funic, and he might have to start dipping into those tangos pretty quickly, they're going to try to prevent him from getting close to even any sort of XP. But Tide's one of the best at this. He walks in, he already anchor smashes him, and he's like, eh, you can hit me all you want, I'm just going to kind of club you if you keep at it. And there's the early uh, bit of a tip, and that's going to force a flat cannon coming out from Silent, which Gyrocopter, with that bit of AoE, he's also going to be good at making sure Funny doesn't get involved too much. Yep, nice damage coming out on the bottom lane here. FNG getting the magic missile and some good right clicks into Yoki. He actually has to pop his Sav and first tango already. Still, again, he's packing a lot of restoration, so shouldn't set him back to the well for quite some time. Nice stack also coming out from the Skywrath Mage. Uh, Vanscore moving about, gets a stack for the Tide, and yeah, that's going to be so important. If the t uh, Funny goes for a non-Gush build, which I believe he is looking for, and then he can just go 0-2-3, uh, clear out those ancient stacks, and build himself up to a really powerful uh, point in the game. And when we talked about the Refresh Orb, that's uh, obviously not a item that you want. Probably your third item is what you're looking at there, but it's still uh, something to look into. In the meantime, Dendi gets to uh, kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the DP. Actually winning out pretty hard in CS here. 7-2 and two over 4-3. and three. He's actually using his Stormhammer to farm because uh, although his it's high, pr pretty high mana cost, the fact that he has a low mana pool makes his bottle all the more effective and he's going to be able to pretty much use that spell whenever he wants. Yeah, and if he gets that Stormhammer off while DP's close to the wave, he gets a little bit of harassment in addition to picking up the CS and it kind of keeps resolution second guess Anytime Dendi has mana as far as how close she can actually commit to going for CS. So the mind games could be lingering there for now. Sven, not a common matchup to go against DP. And DP with that recent nerf, her Crypt Swarm isn't quite what it was right off the bat. So she has to invest the early levels into it for even to do the same respectable bit of damage. Meanwhile, bottom lane, it's Havos getting his own potential solo farm. He's got 12 and 4 CS right now. Void's only bought in 2, so he's still getting zoned back pretty hard. And we'll probably see more of that happen here. Yoki thinks he has an opportunity to get close enough. and. This will, regardless, be able to bring the information towards Empire that these supports are not looking to adventure away. They don't have smoke, so, but as I say that, there's actually a smoke here on FNG. I'm curious how long they'll wait before something comes out, but meanwhile, mid lane, there's your storm. Gonna be able to be thrown out there on resolution with no more mana to work with. A little bit extra harassment, but, uh, yeah, all still quiet on the western front. Interesting. Resolution is going to go for a two sip movement with the, the bottle here. He just goes and sit, takes two out of three sips and he drops his Null Talisman to be a little bit more efficient about it. And that means that the Courier Elgato is going to be able to make his way back to the fountain quickly enough and uh, they won't have to like use the speed burst. They still think that's an important utility for kind of uh, bailing out the Courier in a really bad spot. So in this way he gets the sustain he needs, still is able to throw out a few more Crypt Swarms, but he uh, yeah still will be able to not occupy the Courier for too long indeed. Anyway, Anyways, uh, yeah, Resolution might be in a bad spot here as the, the smoke does come through. They do scout out the Courier and uh, might try to make a go. They have two ranged heroes, but looks like it's just uh, not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking for a moment maybe that was the best chance to try to catch attack. him with anyone, anything being dropped right here or 
Maybe if they both go in at the same time, they can get some hits on this quarter. That's what they're going to go for. One, two. They get no three, four. They got it. One they more. Just, one they more. got it. And that's exactly what we're talking about. If you use the speed burst greedily to bring the courier faster, you're going to lose your courier to somebody sniping it. That's the, the speed burst is designed for this four second get out of jail free card to keep it alive. And if you yep. use it greedily to just enhance your item delivery, then you're going to regret it in some situations. Top lane, we have a support war breaking out here between both teams is just harassment dealt out from both sides almost just a little bit of footsie play cute play right there brings solo down to about a third life as he does grab the haste and retreats himself back to the top lane still attention towards mid they would love to still be able to get hold of his death profit but resolution knows he's got himself way down below this half of the tower still with no support vision and knowing they already left that bottom lane previously They've got to be top. somewhere in that area. Yep, but top lane, though, they're making advancement on Funny, going behind the tower, and they just run him down and shoot him. Silent, pulling out the serious rocket barrage, takes down the Tide Hunter, and this is going to percolate Navi. They have to rotate these supports over to the top lane because they're going to quickly get a tier one, but if they can go for a counter here with Tide Hunter making a comeback, yeah. that would be something nice to grab, but I don't think it's going to be too easy. I like the idea, but uh, actually, it looks like Ben just been scouted out. He took some damage there, and also, um, they don't have Gush. They're not going to be scaling up Gush on Funny because they prioritize these stacks so hard. You don't go for a quad stack on your Ancients at five minutes if you're going to be going for a one uh, pointing Gush build. So we're going to see the slow come out from Skyrath, but I don't think it's enough. Heals are there. They're able to take down the tower. Skyrath gets the last hit, though, and denies it. And well, on the way out, FNG trying to get away from Silent here, who would love to be able to catch up with those phase boots and dish out a rocket barrage, but it's not going to be there. Instead, they pull back. Navi do walk away with a very nice deny, however, and they don't lose a secondary life. I don't think it's too bad. They deny a lot of gold towards Empire. Yeah, really nice deny there. So they weren't able to commit off the tower, but able to hold the line and keep it up. And now Ty can have his free level five. Like, there's no way they're going to try to commit supports to, to going down these gank paths and trying to, to kill him off and uh, try to prevent... Okay, my mouse went crazy there. But yeah, uh, going and trying to uh, prevent him from getting level five. So he will get his three points in Anchor Smash, the two in Kraken Shell he needs to um, farm all those Ancients. And from there, that's Ravage. And that's going to be some real team fight for them. In the meantime, looking at Faces Void, he's doing a little better now, but... But uh, without the agents, uh, agents to rubber band on, he at least will be losing out in terms of gold. Though, pretty even experience, I suppose. Yeah, it's going to take a bit before he gets that level 6. Once the uh, Chronosphere does come online, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to make something happen here on the bottom and being able to take down the Vostapeg, as he's been pretty much going to town here. He's at top CS right now, 44 and 16, putting in the work here on the bottom, but no real threat coming his way just yet. <laughs> Meanwhile, mid lane, Dendi's been having trouble getting a hold of the runes. No surprises, he is a Seven. He can't really move as high mobile as he'd like to see, unless he starts pulling out Warcry just to run down there, but it's been Dazzle who's been controlling the runes at the top, and uh -huh. bottom's been pretty much a free-for-all, but they are going oh, to by kill. the way, on bottom. Yeah, they're going for Yoki behind the tower. No Silence track. Reaper Sight, the first one of the game, is a successful hit, and Yoki out for an additional 30 seconds gives him a 45-second death timer. Yeah. I don't want to jinx it, but I've seen way too many backtracks on Reaper Scythe, and it is the most annoying thing. Actually going to commit the ultimate here, God Strength going on a resolution, but he's got the movement speed to avoid that. They won't be able to turn it around, but it's still kind of a, a waste of transition. Funic will be getting solo experience here in the mid lane. Dandy popping the ultimate. I guess, this, again, mana is not that big of a deal because of the bottle, so it's only just a 80 second cooldown. Yeah, down the dumps. But they get the bottom tier one, they get some nice momentum, and they get that big Reaper Scythe on the void. You take get a 30 seconds extra on the death timer so what uh, starts out at a 20 second death is now a 50 second death and yeah he's not going to be finding his level six just yet so very very nice pickoff on the void and they want to keep this reaper scythe in play as much as they can and at this fragile early point of the game those additional 30 seconds are so crucial you're easily missing out on a couple of waves and all that necessary farm that you would love to be involved with, whether if you're a support and you had a quota as far as bringing together a few additional stacks for your carry, or obviously if you're the carry trying to farm up those stacks and try to get those items online, you're going to be waiting that much longer. And with a low cooldown ability, I mean, Necrophos, if they can find kills each and every time it's up and available, that could slowly begin to stack up on the side of Empire as far as falling quickly behind an XP and Oh, mid lane. Just a bit of stun harassment coming up from Dendi. Yeah. Still flexing his muscles here and... I'm curious though, I mean, does he go right for the BKB rush here on your spend, or does he go for any sort of mobility, attack speed with the Mask of Madness? Like, 
I don't think PKB actually does like too much for him right here. Like, there's some good, decent magic nuke flying out, but there's so much physical damage that he'll still, even with the Warcry, feel pressured with, with or without a BKB. So, kind of just going for a drum buildup, I think, then a Blink Dagger, and then he can consider other options. Can go the BKB Mask of Madness build, as you were talking. Uh, could go for something like an Armlet. It's really good with God's Strength and uh, things of that nature. A lot of people in Twitch chat will cry out for the Agon Scepter, seeing Sven trying to pump up his allies, but I don't see much value in it here with low base damage heroes on the side of Na'Vi, and the fact that that's usually a support Sven pickup. Yeah, I mean, there's always room for it in the late game. Sure. It's percentage based, so, you know, it still at, will add so much. On teams that do have multiple cores that, you know, rely a lot on their damage output, I'd see it as definitely a probable factor, but, and their Krofos is like your other additional core. I don't really know how much he would benefit from something like the Agnum as long as it's spent. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it as any sort of potential investment, but really, who knows? You could get to a point where you have the extra gold, and why not, right? So <laughs> bottom lane, though, they smoke up. They're advancing forward. They would love to be able to get a hold of Solo here, who is indeed Solo, on his Dazzle. Two levels in Shallow Grave. He could pop it off at a reasonable time. He could be safe and allow enough time for a rotation, but... They're not going to allow it. They want an optimal lock. Oh, it was in the way. Oh, oh, oh. He gets off the preemptive grave right now. And unfortunately, Awkward. Navi quickly are going to have to pull back. They do rotate in Silent. And now, Silent going to be forced to head on forward, get a hold of a Havost. Meanwhile, it's going to be Yoki cleaning on out the rest of the supports. If Yoki gets a hold of Havost here, he has a Chrono ready to use, but it might not even be necessary. They just run and gun him down. And they lose two, attack. just like that. A bad engagement. <laughs> And a nice positioning, I guess, from Dazzle on the far right side. He's not going to be caught out too quickly. Just predicted it allows enough time for rotations, and Navi crumble. Yeah, the Axis is also going to be able to turn a lot of damage into this tower. They get the free fortify, so it won't go down immediately. But they will rotate and uh, hold the mid. So God's strength was pop identity. He's like, okay, if you're pushing, so am I. And in this case, they'll be able to have their cake and eat it too. They get to hold their mid. They get to take bottom. The last hit will be going here to Gyrocopter. So Silent's going to get big off of that. And uh, I actually have to mention that engagement was very awkward for the start. Actually, it looks like there might be more here. Magic Missile will go out onto the Gyrocopter. He's lingering around a little too long, but it's enough for Yoki to come on in with a nice chrono. Go follow up with the drop down. They make the call that they cannot get this done. Silence is too low, and on the way back, it's going to be Witch Doctor. Here, you take this for you, my friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. heal but, but in that but, last uh, yeah. fight on the on the bottom lane, there is actually this Observer Ward. I usually praise this as being like an awesome ward, getting the vision, seeing things coming from multiple angles. But that Plateau Ward on the eastern side actually saw the Void coming in from the northwest. And so what that meant was they didn't get the Concussive on the target they wanted, the Dazzle. And what turned into a quick, easy kill on the Dazzle turned into a fight they weren't ready for. So it's actually just weird, the Concussive factor you can't control, and Void coming out of the woodwork right in the nick of time. So, yeah, Navi, they're down in kills, but they're ready with this Ravage, and uh, we'll be seeing them push them to Tier 1. Yep, Tier 1, we'll see if Empire looking to defend. Uh, no Gloom available as it's already been used, and they will secure Dyer's it. It's Phonic uh, who grabs him the fallen. last hit, puts him damn near close towards that Blink Dagger, and he actually has Tranquils and an Energy Booster on the side, so yeah. didn't go for the Arcanes. I think he will. I think he'll go both. Two so Booster up. back and hold on to the Ring of Protection in the meantime. Well, I don't, I don't think you can disassemble Tranquil Boots anymore, but I think you can actually like carry both and still find value in it, like unlimited HP and mana. It helps. Yeah, it, why not? The team definitely needs the Arcanes. Uh, like, the Sven's not going to be going for it. The Necrophos isn't going for it. They've got Treads. They need another set of Arcane Boots, and I honestly think Funic should go double boots here. Maybe not yeah. now. Uh, Blink Dagger is pretty important, but still, it's uh, at the very least a casual energy booster to build up his own mana pool. Two boots, two feet. Vos mid lane. <laughs> he's got his soul booster together, so it looks like he's going for a bloodstone on your Necrophos. So that's a little bit of everything, a little bit of extra HP, a little bit of extra mana to work with. Not too much as far as stats go, but, you know, kind of out of your norm from most recent Necrophos kind of builds, but looking to make it work. We've seen anything from the more mobile Blink Dagger kind of a build into the more Agnum's Rush style, and then build the extra bit of life from there. Vos is getting a little bit of everything with this, and hopefully to benefit with. Uh, few early charges in that ultimate. As he starts heading towards the top lane, still has yet to get hold of the level 2. Meanwhile, you see VS is going to get stunned in solo here, locked in place. Will he be taken down for Grave? Oh. No, he gets the Grave off with 4 life to spare. 
walks away, and that pesky dash will live on. Meanwhile, Dendi getting big, big damage, forced to step back from Jarosaka's output. X nice is gonna be popped. There's your Ravage, catches very nicely, and at the same time, Yoki pulled out Chrono. So that Chrono not gonna come out to anything, and now Yoki's under pressure. Havo steps in, Reaper Sight, though, it's not gonna happen. And now, they end up turning and bursting down Dazzle. Navi still holding strong for now. Empire corralled behind their own tower. And it looks like it's going to be Yoki who's going to be able to retreat away from this one, but Phonix not letting up yet. And same with Dendi with his own blink. Jumps in, nice storm hammer. Locks on two. Can they take down Yoki? He's able to bring weapon. <laughs> Backtrack's still coming out, but he does get the right click right there. And they anchor smash home the Wish Doctor. And they make it three for nil when it's all done. Navi still managed to pull together a very nice fight. Yeah, but the most annoying thing in the world that just could happen did happen. That 10% backtrack uh, dodged the sweeper site. Like, that's so frustrating. It should be the one hit KO. It should be the, the finisher that sets you in the right direction. This guy's out of the fight. For 30 extra seconds, I get the heal. We build momentum. But instead, he just backtracks it and he survives for far too long. Still, uh, they're going to be able to get the tower. They're going to be able to bring down Solo. He's pretty much in no man's land here. Solo is like, maybe I can sneak it for the deny, and now he's like creating space here on the top part of the jungle as they make him work a little bit extra for it with that shallow grave, but Navi just kind of grab another sweet kill for themselves. And your biggest lead of the game now going to be in Navi's control, pushing near the 4K mark. Farming up, you see how good Dendi put that blink dagger to use, so he's going for more mobility at the start, and then we'll bring Radiant's up a bit bottom tower of extra sustain. We'll see if it's going to be the BKB, though. That can always be tricky going against that Chronosphere. And already the hefty damage output from Gyrocopter. We'll have to see what he decides to make his investments while touching base with this Gyrocopter. Speaking of BKBs, he's got his complete. He heads back to base. He will get a hold of it. And now he can feel a little bit more comfortable in some of these fights, not having to worry too much about the output of uh, Vengeful Spirit. Of course, the Ravage that could pop, which, by the way, the Ravage in that fight worked out just beautifully for oh them Oh my gosh, well. it's so good. Funny like jumping it... in, gets a nice time Ravage at the same time as Yoki jumping with Chrono. He gets caught with that Ravage, and his Chrono is just doing nothing except giving him a nice little shelter. Yeah, I, I zoomed out on that one. It was like a, a flower blossoming in springtime. It was just beautiful just spreading out hitting everybody in that big arc and able to just nullify the chrono's effect do a lot of work in the fights and and i actually am wrong about the the our energy booster turning into arcane boots it looks like funnick is going for a bloodstone as well and what oh. i essentially can call this is a respawn death timer advantage strat with getting two bloodstones on your team you're able to with 30 seconds extra on one respawn from Empire, and with multiple stacks of Bloodstone coming your way, you're able to reduce your death timers a ton, increase their death timers a ton, and fight in between the late game oh, chronospheres. No. Nice swap back into Reaper Scythe, and boom. Boom. The boom takes out Death Prophet, but they actually want to fight still. Empire! Oh, this is a bad call. They try to go in, and now it's just Silent and Yoki trying to be able to open up, but Silent gets caught as well, and he is going to be forced to go back. Not the best positioning for Chrono, not the best fight to take whatsoever and it's just an immediate team wipe from Na'Vi oh Death Prophet just gets caught out easily though she throws up the Yules on Havost she can't get away from the swap of VS it just puts her right on a plate for Havost to just slam down the Reaper Scythe and Empire Daya's think they can still take a fight and it's it's certainly not the case another beautiful Ravage just locks them all down they easily clean up fortified. This is getting really scary for Empire. They need like a max Shallow Grave and Blink Dagger on Solo. They need to get in and Shallow Grave every Reaper Scythe or they're going to be losing towers left and right. It's, Necro is just such a great objective taker with the fact that he puts you in the grave so long and they're going to be able to take the tier 2 tower mid no problem at all. They don't lose anything. They get the full 5 man wipe and they build up the Bloodstone charges on Havost. He now has a completely instant respawn time, able to jump back into it and yeah, he's just been so active. They take a nice little clean stack. They're just getting so much off the map. Empire have to make something big happen. They need to get a huge Chronosphere. They need to get another BKB against this Ravage, probably on the Death Prophet. And uh, they just need a really good fight because as it stands, Na'Vi are losing very little. They're gaining a ton. And uh, that's uh, Bloodstone on Funic, I think is actually gonna be a real thorn in their side as they just can't bring anybody down for long. It's like Meepo Syndrome. Everybody's got divided we stand now. Everybody comes back just a little bit too early for you to really capitalize on your kills. So if the fights also keep happening, is Navi would be able to add the extra pressure. Let's say they keep the fights, and I Dyer's assume they will. I mean, look at all the aggressive wards already in the jungle. If they keep the fights, 
on this side of the map. Mm -hmm. That's more time for Empire to have to cover to just get to the other side. By the time they Dyer's actually get to the boy, uh, the base rather, attack. those death timers are already so low. They'll be up and ready for a solid defense. So you can see if it can work out very nicely. And now Roche can be easily cleaned up. They invest the exorcism for it, but this is one of the first plays for Empire to make a, a comeback here. And plus these stacks that have been built up very nicely from their Witch Doctor. He's going to quickly farm down as well. Yeah, so I mean, they still have lots of potential here. We're not counting Empire out by any stretch. They're in a bad spot right now, but silent in silent we trust. His gyrocopter is absolutely insane in the mid to late game, and his GPM is not bad at all. He's actually right up there with Havos at 534 and about to make that so much sweeter with this ancient stack. So in a really Dyer's good position there. So the smoke, yeah, smoke goes to the jungle. So he'll uh, have the full time to farm this up. Even though they have this observer ward kind of scouting it out, they're going to let him have it, and they're just going to... Try to go for a pick and push up top. Is under attack. Yeah, they'll see if they can catch anyone. Resolution was in the area, but not looking to make any sort of moves towards that tier two top lane. Her host is just kind of acting as bait for now. On the opposite side, Yoki's farming on up. He's got his TP ready to get into the engagement, but not the best Radiant's of farm for him. On his uh, faceless void, attack. he still only has power trash. Dyer's not even a mask of madness thrown is together yet in about 20 yeah. minutes. Dyer's this is a faceless void who is forward. not online when you'd like him to be. And now blinking forward, Dendi does get the good oh. pop up on Solo, but Solo Jeez. will be able to live, just kind of walks away from that Mystic Flare. Still being only level one, not quite enough to burst to even take down Dazzle, who, you know, Radiant's shrugs it off for now. They're not going to be able to make attack. any sort of advancement. Navi just pulled back. Yeah, if they had actually gotten the Ancient Seal off, I'm not sure if vision or range was the issue and he didn't want to overextend, but if they had gotten the Ancient Seal off, that actually would have been the death of Dazzle, and that might have been some more damage on the Tier 3, but as it stands, he will survive. They'll just spread the map and uh, get back control of their jungle, because Yoki's actually building up. You mentioned he's really low on net worth right now, only 235 GPM. He has a long way to go to be a real threat, but any opportunity he can take to farm like this, and uh, he will be moving that direction, even finding a nice little cutting through a little juke spot here with the Quelling Blade. Like, they, they can't find him here. Yeah, he's, he's, he's working his way. He's going to walk in any sort of common ward area. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So he's going to see what's happening. Oh, man. If Bad news there. Seal is so quick and instant. Oh, both. It's a nice little cherry on top right there for Havos as he brings in an additional Bloodstone charge. And though he was trying to be sneaky in those trees, man, Skyrath Mage just, I mean, one of the best supports. This is part of the reason you didn't see him pick up so much. He has so much damn range to work with and ancient seal is just instant cast mm -hmm. so the second you spot if you have any sort of a quick trigger finger you're going to catch someone at the right time and Dyer's they're going to have nowhere to go fan is just attack. right on it faceless void does not have the reaction time to quickly time walk out they take him apart yeah, this is absolutely insane. The tempo from Navi right now, like, off with his head. He's down for another 30 seconds. They'll take the bottom tier two. And honestly, like, when they look for the high ground right here, oh, go again, again. Always want to fly. Not the place you want to be, but a nice shallow grave keeps him up. That probably was pushing top lane, but now it's came in. Pull out the exorcism, and they're looking to take down Denny. This is big damage, and with that silence out, they do bring him down with the additional help of the Death Ward. This is two ultimates, though brought into the fray to just take down the one Sven. So on the way out, they'll grab a few uh, ancient camps, but with no Roche to move into, as uh, Navi have already grabbed it, and they are not still holding on to the uh, Aegis. I guess it was already used. I thought it wasn't used yet, man. Oh, well, Tarakov just got they... it. Huh? Silent has the Aegis. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're probably going to look to make use of it, I would imagine, here in an upcoming fight. And Well, for Navi, still their game. They don't lose a whole lot in the top. They know when the right time to take a fight is, and... For now, they'll just take advantage. They feel like their farm potential is just a whole lot higher. As Vos now pushing towards 4K. I mean, what do you wager his next investment is? He's already got the one ultimate orb. Is it just going to go straight sheep stick? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could see a weird little build with, like, Scotty right clicks. But, and that's nice with the Vengeance Aura that they already have from the uh, VS, of course. But I, I would say Hex just makes too much sense. So, yeah, he picks it up immediately. Does uh, Important to note, he does not need the safe buyback at all. Can just spend all of his reliable gold because he has an instant respawn. He, he literally buys back every time he dies without sp spending a dime. Like, it's it's really nice. In, in fact, if we just look at the death timers right now, Necro, he's about to be at four seconds once he levels up. But Tide right now is only at a 12 second respawn time himself. Funnick with that fresh eight stacks of Bloodstone. Like, like they could just rally their troops so quickly, get back to the fight, and if you look at Yoki not even being level 11 yet, that means you ha are working around a 130 second chronosphere cooldown, and these guys have a dozen seconds on the respawn timers. Like, 
it's really hard to find uh, if, if in the first place it's really hard to find a good initial fight but following that up 30 seconds later Navi's gonna be ready for round two and Empire won't have anything so looking really strong though Navi taking control and taking advantage of a lower farmed faceless void just feeling a nicer spread through their whole team not looking to engage quite yet just more item optimization it looks like as Funic gets a hold of his Perseverance. This is the early investment towards his potential refresher. Bottom lane, Dendi jumps in, going for the creep wave, but lurking nearby is both Yoki and Always Wanna Fly. Not looking to bite. Just kind of getting an extra bit of intel. And it's Navi who smoke up in their own jungle, not under a ward. And they're gonna creep on through and see if they can get a hold of anyone here. That Aegis now expired on the side of Empire. They can take them down and take a big team fight here. They can look to break high ground. So we'll see them just uh, finding the try looking for the pick and oh solo oh, just says he hello. Solo immediately take him down. Jeez, that up. Take a lot. Yeah, I mean this is this is tier three right here. Like what does Empire do to try to defend this? They can't overcommit if they get caught out the back end of the Reaper site. They will be out for a long time and forced to go right into their buyback piggy bank. Siege of War with these illusions is Dendi. Doesn't even have a BKB yet himself, but still feeling pretty confident. The slow siege for now, and with the sustain they already have, they can hang by this lane as long as possible. But they ping back towards the woods, maybe going to look to put down a, a ward in the opposing Empire jungle for now. But it's been a slow siege coming out from Navi. They're up and ahead, but they don't quite have the commitment to jump on through and take a fight inside the base itself. Yeah, I think they still, to have full confidence, they want the refresher on the tide. Right now he's got the bloodstone, so he doesn't have to go for Shivas or Arcanes or even a Force Staff to build up the mana he needs to go for the double ultimate. Actually, nice smoke play coming out. Can they get anything out of this? The Chrono's huge! Ooh, big Chrono on three with a weak follow-up and Death Ward on the ground is big damage on Denby, which takes him apart. Ravage is there from Funic, but it's not going to be enough to slow their roll. They now turn their sight towards Yoki while the boat gets cleaned up from Silent. Now they put on Funic. Funic can't TP out. It's taken down. And a big all or nothing turnaround play from Empire proves to take down both Funic and Dendi. They come out on top. They're not done yet. They're pressing towards this mid lane, but you can already see that Bloodstone on Funic going to work. He's already back in about two more seconds. But he doesn't have Ravage available. He can still put up a reasonable defense. Yeah, still, I mean, you're getting that full, those three kills, and then suddenly everybody's still up, like, that's that's pretty big. Obviously, he came up so quick, I forgot he even attack. died. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's, uh, I'm not sure if he was instant or a four second respawn. It's one of the two, but yeah, no, he's, he's always going to be on the map. And this is something you have to respect a lot. The Chronosphere was a decent cooldown, not going to be up for another minute, but it was just so immense. Finding that opportunity, like, how do you happen upon into your jungle just smoking through? They wanted one person kind of farming up a, a new camp. That's what they were looking for with that smoke. And instead, they happen upon four heroes clumped up together for the perfect Chrono. Tide does blink out, but. Uh, I mean, the damage is done with the Death Ward far enough away to keep going, and uh, the Weave synergy as well. Gyrocopter, the, uh, Witch Doctor, Dazzle, they eat him for lunch, and that was... It's the beginning of a comeback, if I've ever seen one. I mean, obviously, it's, they have a, a tough hill to climb, but the amount of gold and experience you can get back in 6.82, even C, is uh, pretty immense. And uh, if they're going to be able to claw their way back into this one, that was the beginning of it. Yeah, I would chalk it to also just good game plan, good map attack. sense. I mean, they see Navi after they push away from the mid lane. They go up towards the top. They take out their sentry ward here on the low ground. They put up a ward of their own. And with this ward over here on the side, they don't see anyone coming out from the back end. They just make the assumption Navi are still in their own jungle. And they make the call and make a smoke. And it proves to be very profitable for them. It definitely creates a little bit more time for them to build up a little bit of farm because high ground defense is going to be of the utmost importance here, I'd imagine, attack. for the side of Empire. They're about to lose their last outer tower just to the creeps here on the bottom lane. Bottom it will crumble. Has and now it's going to be on Empire to make a big comeback play, but not, they don't only have to break through the first lives of Na'Vi, but with these bloodstones up, it's going to take a whole lot of effort to take them down because, as pointed out before, even if they defend in their own base, it's going to take a lot of time to make the map coverage to the other side. But here we go, fun and creeping on forward. With Havos side-by-side, side, checking out the side camp, but they have nice map coverage here to be as aggressive as they want. This ward right here provides a lot of vision from uh, the front gate of the Empire base, but they can't see the smoke. Empire going for another aggressive play here. And they got They're everything. not going to see. It's going to pop right near the secret shop at this rate, but they're still pulling out. 
Yeah, I think Navi know something's up. I mean, they haven't seen anybody farming the creepways, and they, they know that there's a risk at the very least. They'll smoke up themselves, and neither one will break. At, ni at nighttime, I don't think either one saw that smoke, so yeah, Funnick's going to be the bait, and if they fall for it, if they collide too much, it could be disastrous. Still, they're going to just go into the roach pit, and what a perfect time if they just It'll wait five more seconds. seconds. Oh, that's so... It could be disastrous for them if they stay in the pit and they get uh, oh. destroyed by Navi. But if they don't scout it oh, out, we're gonna it's huge. Farnick has a Blink Ravage oh, ready. Oh, no. The Weaver puts out a nice weave. I'm sorry, the Weaver does not put out a Navi regardless, but they jump in immediately. Silent gets grave so preemptively, he will win. He beat KP, he's going to get out when he can while he's still alive. Oh, my and gosh! It's it does take down Havos. Havos will like 15 seconds. will be right back in it, so they lose two on each side. But Nendi now chopping it home, able to get down the kill, take out another. He fires back, turns his tights towards Solo, and bursts him home. Ultra kill for Dendi, the big splash, the red man. Leaves it on home and clears out the rest of Empire. And now we'll finish off what they started on Roche. And that Roche is coming right back into it. Says, okay, kill me once, kill me twice, whatever. I'll be right back in. And he actually dies to Roche. And the Aegis is selling. So, what? Uh, Dendi died to Roche. Oh boy. Well. Yeah, These cataclysmic team fights, it just looks so pro, so crisp, so incredible. The Ravage interrupting Dyer's the Chronosphere and all these crazy attack. things going back and forth. And then you die to the, the, the neutral creep there. Sorry. You know, it's just... You, you can't underestimate. Roche Dyer's has more damage now. And, mm -hmm. attack. It was just yesterday, I believe, as well, we saw Roche take down, I think it was even Funic, as a Tidehunter, just trying to get it done. And they get caught out so easily. I guess it just can never underestimate the shockwave power of Roshan, and unfortunately Dendi. At least it's not over to Empire's side, but top lane, the boast, he's chasing down, always want to fly, sheeps him up, right clicks at home, can he get close enough now to finish him off with the big wham bam reaper side? Oh, oh, nice desperation, uh, don't what? you can't. <laughs> huh? Oh, the death warp the body side. blocks it. Back in once more. Here it comes. No, the grave is there and saves them on both now. Put it to a corner of the trees. He does get the kill, but he drops the Aegis. He desperately needs aid from Navi. We're quickly trying to move up here, but it looks like he could fall again. And he just goes down immediately. He just puts himself out of his own misery at that point, but... Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Classic. Both. Exactly, exactly. There's no better way to put it. He got body blocked by the death ward. I was like, why isn't he, why isn't he just jumping in the... Oh, Yoki gets begged. Oh. The Observer Ward's still in play from the, the Plateau, the Dire Jungle. So they will be able to find that nice little pick off there. But without the Necro on the front lines, I don't think they followed up with anything. They, uh, just lose the, they lost the Aegis and the second life of the Necro, and they got nothing. Ooh, Silent here, Mystic Flare, Silence, he actually oh, has to oh, pop oh. BKB and he's going to try to take oh, it. Oh, no! He still falls. The Cloud Shoes are out, they're on, really? they're shined up and ready to go for both of these teams, but Skyrath, he's like, I don't care, I just took you out 1v1, no big deal. Oh my god. Well, that's, uh, this is turning into a very CIS game of Dota 2. Really shenanigans coming out from both sides there. I mean, attack animation projectiles killing off each other in a duel. Uh, support versus hard carry. It just it gets no more interesting than that. But uh, yeah, right now at least uh, Havos is coming up the front lines. The Bloodstone's still helping a little bit. He ended up suiciding with his second life. Knew that he didn't really have anything going for him anymore. The Tide Refresher is out. That's the big deal here. He has enough mana for both, and they are both level 16. So it's a really, really powerful combo. And, uh, here comes a oh, Blinking in, though. Throwing going to catch the two. Death Ward's down, but immediately... Oh, my God! Not one, but two big ravages. That stops any sort of Death Ward nonsense. They quickly clean out Yoki. They get rid of that Death Drop, and they cut down the Witch Doctor. And they are just Silent. cleaning out the house of Empire right now. But Silent says, I got one last thing up my sleeve. I fire forward and burst down Havos, and now Dendi's on the run. Silent has put together a respectable amount of damage with this MKB and has quickly upset Navi's advancement into their base. Though so they have taken down the tier three and still persistent is going to be Dendi here, still moving into the high ground, doing what he can while most of the abilities and most of the Empire group is down. It's still going to be Silent nearby with a flat cannon that could just clean out the rest of the creeps. 
Yeah, so, uh, unfortunately for Dendi, his war cry was on cooldown for a little bit earlier in the fight when the Chrono was actually coming in. So when Silent came through, there was no bonus armor, and they're relying on that bonus armor heavily to survive Radiant's through uh, all the physical ultimates denied. and uh, the flag cannon. So the fact that that was down when Silent came out to play, uh, he pretty much makes up for his buyback in full gold-wise, and uh, they hold their racks. So again, that comeback, that high ground defense. It's really legit with heroes like Faceless Void and Gyrocopter in this position. So still the absolutely. Ravage was absolutely insane, but it's not the Game Breaker just yet. I mean, do you think of another strong defense after like that one? And would Gyrocopter be able to pull together enough in his arsenal to bring back this game on his back alone? I mean, it's, it's a Necrophos who could deal so much damage out there in Dendi Sven, but a Gyrocopter is a Gyrocopter after all. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he needs to go for the Hail Mary kind of a play and pick up the big Rapier, but... I think he always has that kind of potential to bring the game back. It, I mean, if they make another good defense like that one. Yeah, it seems like it. Like, in this position, in 6.81, to answer your question, I would absolutely think that Silent could just put this one on his back and carry it solo. But with the BKB change, that he can't buy a new one. The, the fact that he's stuck at five seconds for the rest of the game really hurts him. He's up against two Ravages, the Stormhammer, the Magic Missile. We've seen what Skywrath can do when he doesn't have the BKB up. Like... The five-second BKB is really limiting Silent's late-game potential, and it's just obviously something that you have to deal with. You pick up the gyro BKB early, you realize that it is going to taper, and Tide is about to hit his prime when he gets that refresher back up, and he's up against only five seconds of the BKB of his enemy core. I, I gotta say, it was really impressive that the Devil Ravage came out before Resolution's BKB. That was really just what absolutely destroyed that fight, but yeah, Silent's still massively farmed, and all eyes on him. We'll see if we'll be able to kind of bring together big damage. It would certainly help if this Void can throw together his BKB at least. He's already putting down a reasonable setup with his Chronosphere for his Silent Companion to kind of clean out with the damage, but he's under heavy pressure himself, and being able to deter any of that damage coming in, especially from Skyrath Mage, who works with hefty range, he just sees the Chrono drop, and he'll put a Mystic Flare right on top of the head of Faceless Void, and it makes him second guess from getting any sort of damage in with his Mask of Madness especially, so... Getting a hold of that BKB would be very crucial for them, but now you got an AC picked up here from Dendi. You invest Big. a lot into it. He will not have BKB or buyback rather available, and he does not you know, benefit from any sort of bloodstone. So as they begin to push up this top lane, Funnick's gonna have not one, but two Ravages at the ready. And Navi looked like they're gonna try to make another go into the high ground here of the Empire base. Yeah, there's just there's a very significant armor advantage here for Navi with the War Cry providing so much when it's active. It's 16 bonus armor, the plus five from the AC, and then obviously the negative aura along with the Wave of Terror. They have just this dramatic armor advantage until Weave is at maximum potential, and uh, I think that that's really the the point of emphasis here is if Navi can t really cement their advantage of the fight within the first five to eight seconds, very clearly, just doing all that damage and uh, maybe. Getting a Reaper Scythe on somebody, then that's going to be the game. I mean, we do see uh, Necro kind of wish-wash between Shivas and Aghanims, but either way, no matter what he picks up, if he is able to get the big Reapers out on the target of choice, then that's the game. But at least for now, uh, I still think that Silent has a really good shot at it, building up the Butterfly. That's going to be his ticket back into this one, dodging the hard right clicks that are not that... Like we talked about it, there's not that much base damage flying out from Na'Vi. There's a lot of spell damage, in fact. But if you can be nigh immortal during your five seconds, that's going to be the best way to bring yourself in until at least Dendi picks up an Abyssal. Vinscourt just throws out a awkward Mystic Flare, hence the face pick up right there. It's not going to do a whole lot to any of the creeps, but maybe just trying to put it on resolution in hopes that maybe he just kind of goes AF AFK for a moment and takes nice. full damage. But he popped a 37 minute clarity for that, you know. He, he's got zero second cooldown with the eggs. He might as well just <laughs> chug, a, chug a few pots, get a egg to go pocket, keep of the light, and uh, keep playing like that. Yeah. He'll bring up a bit of that extra bit of mana so he has everything to work with, and the more arcane bolts, the merrier in these fights. Kavos leaves out the front charge right now. He's down to six charges on his Bloodstone, so the comeback factor isn't as significant as it used to be, but still offers a lot this late into the game. Now smoked out is the rest of the troops. Navi waiting in behind. It looks like mid is going to be the next striking place because if something goes big here, they could always fall back onto a Roche. They can't quite break into the base, but take down a couple of Empire members. So 
The most creeps forward. Spawn's going to be there. Nice full range use. Brings resolution all the way back. And they burst for now. Oh. Only a secondary Ravage blocks are enough, so they can't take her apart. Silent also goes down. Now, this Navi setup is what they were looking for, and it immediately props to GG. This time, Funnick hits a home run with not one, but two Ravages that Empire cannot come back from. Tidehunter is a very good hero. Yes, uh, he is. Getting the refresher of that early on, there's just no answer for Frampa. They were exhausting BKBs every fight. Uh, you saw Havos didn't even use the Reaper Scythe there. He didn't need to. Like, that's not a core aspect of their lineup anymore. It was really good in the first 20 minutes, but since then, it's like, yeah, take it or leave it.